Right, big man. Thanks very much for doing this. No problem. Um, I don't know if you usually watch it, but uh, I usually ask the questions on a laptop. But I, I, didn't I, did. you, I didn't want you to I fell asleep after the first one. <laughs> <laughs> um, just to get started, mate, we're going to start with your bread and butter. I mean, no naming any, any names, but some people are born with a style gene. And uh, you've obviously born with I've a... I've got it. You've no. No, come on, mate. Look. Love Island. Love Island. Um, <laughs> I think the trainers won Love Island six years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I wore his on Saturday against his fight, mate. Um, Still got MOM, though, didn't you, mate? <laughs> um, obviously, the goal scorer, mate. You were just born with, <coughs> weren't you? Um, do you think it was just a natural thing that, that you had? Um, you know, I think when I look back, I would say yes, obviously, you've, you've been born with a natural talent to find the net, but I, I would say with my right foot, yes, but, you know, I think that um, when I go back and, you, you know, you start trying to piece things together, um, that. I can remember playing with my mates at the park one day and my right foot had hurt my right foot, I'd kicked the bottom of somebody's studs um, and because you were the wee guy who was wanting to play football all the time and everything, I decided that I'll play and I'll, I'll hit shots with my left foot um, and, and all of a sudden, you know, you started scoring goals with your left foot, um, no many with the head, that's how my hair fell out but it's grew back, <laughs> um, but you know, I, I think you then started to you know, find other um, tools that you could use to score more goals. Um, and as I said, that I'm, I'm pretty comfortable going my right and, and shooting or my left. But I think when you when you start to, the older you get and you start to look back and, and decide or, or recap what happened, um, you know, it didn't just happen overnight. Um, it was it was plenty of years of practice. But you, were you always that wee guy who'd make about 50 quid a weekend while you'd uh, gain your money for goals ahead? <laughs> no, I wasn't, to be fair, because, you know, I think my, my dad was probably one of the biggest influences in my career in terms of... It was never up there, it was never down there. Even, um, you know, if you had a good game, I had a bad game for my dad um, because he always kept me grounded. Um, you know, it was always, I could still have done more. Um, you know, so I think that for me, it was it was excellent um, upbringing. Um, you know, and I think when I look back as well, you know, I trained every night. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I know I've got this, a lot of people will say you've got this style of laziness and everything, but I think if you go and speak to any of my coaches, um, you know, I never miss a day's training. Um, I'm there all the time. I might not be up the front, mm -hmm. um, but there's one thing, I'll start the training session, I'll finish it, and that's been the story since, you know, you've been a wee boy. So when you went into Kelly, was, um, who was, was there an influence, a person that started to teach how to get the arson, the <coughs> movement in the box, to add to the goal scoring, or did that come naturally to you as well? Well, I think, you know, for me, I... I mean, I know it's going back to it next year, um, but I think the reserve football for me was massive. Um, you know, I was 15, 16 year old. In fact, even before that as well, I can remember going down to Queen of the South a couple of nights a week and training with, you know, men. Um, and it was, it was difficult. Um, you know, you're struggling. But looking back now, it was great. And, and, and even when you got into Kilmarnock at first, you know, I, can, I mean, I played with the, the, you know, the reserves at 15 year old, I think, with, with, um, with Matt Roberts, who for me was an unbelievable football player. Um, you know, I, I know he's still playing just now. I think he's 41, 42, still playing the juniors um, down our way. Um, but at that time, you know, excellent in terms of, you know, because I wasn't blessed with, with pace either, but it was able to, you know, to see that the importance of taking the ball in, laying it off and getting yourself in the box. You know, Mark wasn't the, the, the most, he wouldn't score the most goals, um, but he would. He was get himself in positions, um, you know, and that's where I felt as if if I could watch him, learn from him, I knew I could finish. It's mad, isn't it? Because you get all these coaches and you coach kids, you coach kids, and I was the same when you play a reserve game with a Let Lambert or Petrov's playing. You sit and watch him. That's when you actually learn the game, isn't it? Well, I think you know until you've been in the situation where, you, where you've been, you know, chucked in against men, and you're the, the you're the boy who is you know getting chucked about, and you need. You need the men in the team to stand up and, and help the youngsters. Um, you know, at that time, you know, we were carrying a big squad with Um and, and I was fortunate enough there wasn't a lot of strikers. So even when I was, you know, 15, 16, 17, you're playing with the, the reserves at that time, um, it was still full of men. You know, and I think the sooner it gets back to it, the better, because, you know, it was... It was a big learning curve for me as well. It meant something to them, not just for the fact that they were, it was a game of 90 minutes. You know, when you look at a lot of kids nowadays, it's, we'll go and play 90 minutes, we'll play a game of football, we'll try and learn stuff. For those guys then, you know, looking back at it now, they had to perform at that level to get back in the first team. So there was a driving determination, mm -hmm. no matter whatever um, game you were playing, there was always something, there was a meaning for it. Um, you know, and, and it was excellent at the time. And as I said, for me, it helped me so much in my development. 
Um, you know, and I also think you know Bobby Williamson, Jerry McCabe, and Jim Clark were excellent at the time. Alan Robertson, um, who brought me to the club, um, but you know, to, to be given the opportunity, as a seventeen-year-old, to, to go um, and get your debut, it was it was excellent. But as I said, a lot of it was down to the teammates I'd played with. So, do you remember your uh, leading up to your debut? What do you think you were doing well that, that Bobby Williamson? Um, Blacker strikers. Well, I think I think I think that that. You know, I was always scoring goals, no matter whatever level it was. Um, you know, the 17s, the 20s, I was still scoring. Um, there was, at that time, you know, the strikers had come back, they were fit. Um, but there wasn't really a, a blessed goal scorer amongst it. Um, you know, early in the careers, um, Paul Wright had scored a lot of goals for Kamarnock. Ali McCoy had come in and scored a lot of goals for Kamarnock. Um, you know, you had Jerome Varai. Um, you know, there, there, there was loads. Marco was still there. There was loads round about, but... You know, there wasn't really, it wasn't as if it was free for, for loan football, it was scoring every week. Um, and you know, as soon as I got that first, you know, the, it was the last game of the season, we beat Celtic 1-0 at Robbie Park, Alan Mahood scored. Um, as soon as you got that, you know, first taste it, that wee first win bonus in your back pocket, you wanted more. Um, you were never happy, you were you know, itching to get back as soon as the, the season finished, uh, over the summer, sorry, get back in, get started. And from there, um, you know, it just it grew and grew and grew, and as I said, I, f I found myself in a first team at, at 17, 18 year old, and that's been it since. Do you try and be that person to the younger players that come on it now? Are you hard on them? Were yes, the older, I am. Were the I'm older not, players I mean, hard I, on I, you? McCoy's and stuff like that, were they hard on you? No, I mean, I don't, you know, it was. The, the, for, for me, looking, looking back now, um, I think when people speak to you on a, on a daily basis and, and want the most from you. I think the worrying aspect, and I've, I've said it to a few of the youngsters right now, the worrying aspect for me is when, when coaches don't speak to you, when, um, you know, when senior players don't speak to you, I think they look at it as you're finished. Um, or they might have spoke to you before but you don't listen, you continue to do the same things. So I think f for me looking back, um, you know, I was always I mean, I'm the first to admit it, I'm a football geek. There's no doubt about it. There's no much will go on that I don't know. Um, you know, I used to pester the life out of everybody. Um, and, you know, I can even go back to, to even like, you know, when you're 10, 11, 12, I, I was still training with men then as well. I got the part and trained with the, the local amateur team. Um, just to, and I was annoying them then as well. But I think for me, I was always trying to test myself against better. Um, and it's not until you didn't realise you were doing it at the time. I think it's not till you, till you finish. Uh, or sorry, when you look back and you, and you start to, to break everything down, that's probably where I've got to. Um, because I think my mindset separates me from a lot of people in terms of uh, I am mentally strong enough to, to put up with a lot of things, but I think that was probably because I get the shit booted out of me mm -hmm. um, when I was a wee guy. And you just come back from it, you come back from it, you come back from it, you take the knocks. So Bobby Williamson left and it was Jim Jeffries that came in? Yes. Uh, I was speaking to Big Gordy Gray and he said that he remembers he was doing really well in the first team uh, and one week out of a sudden dropped, said I went in uh, Jim Jeffrey's office, the Jet, and said to him, uh, Gaffer, just didn't ask him why I'm not playing, and Jim Jeffrey says, because I picked the fucking team, I'm the manager, <laughs> get out. Is that, is that, was he the similar way? Yes, and do you know something, I wouldn't have changed it. Uh -huh. um, you know, Jim Jeffries, Bally Brown, for me, are in a step down from Walter Smith in terms of where they've been, but from the same, cut from the same cloth. Um, it was football, 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 football. Um, they lived and breathed it. It was, it was, um, it was a tough environment. Um, and as I said, if you, if you know, Big Gordon's right there. If if you know, if you weren't playing, he didn't need to give you a reason why you weren't playing or not. You know, you weren't playing. That was it. Um, you know, I think that there was a. I don't want to say a culture. There was a. There was a lot of older players come at the end at Kilmarnock when Bobby left, when Jim came in, and, and I think at first he had to be that cutthroat, like just bang, bang, go, 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 go. And I think he got rid of a lot of them and replaced them, um, you know, with older experience. I mean, I can remember Stevie Fulton, Gary Locke, um, Gary McSwiggin came in, um, you know, and uh, Jose Katongo. But I think they all had a purpose in why they came, um, because, you know, Hearts were a bigger club. They, they, they were somewhere, you know, the guys who had, that he brought in, you know, had played at a higher level, um, you know, and, and they were good players. And I think the ones who were already there, it was either we're going to go with this group because it wasn't going to change, or you're out the door. And I think when, 
when you started to get on with people, like, you know, Alan Mahood and that were still there as well, um, who was a fantastic player. Um, you know, very, very underrated. Um, I mean, I know he had a couple of bad knee injuries and that, but, you know, a really, really good player. Um, get about the pitch, create chances, stop the opposition playing as well. Um, you know, he was a big influence as well because, you know, having been there with the older kind of core, you know, Hoodie was the only one that kind of stayed. And, you know, you looked up to Hoodie um, because he had been part of the old group and the club was changing. Um, you know, and it was important to, to still have that connection with somebody. Um, from when I went in, you know, full time at first, and, and it was, it was, you know, we, we, we were close, um, and, and it was good, and I think we we took that. Cause, I mean, the, the understanding we had on a pitch was was really good, and you know, Hoodie set up a lot of my goals as well. In fact, my first goal as well, he was, he was part of it. So before you went to Rangers, there was a lot of interest in you before that. Um, was there a was there a couple of times <coughs> that bids were rejected? Was, were, were you going to go anywhere else? Or well, I, I think we had played Sunderland, um, you know, a pre season. I think I, I scored a couple of goals and. It was starting from then. I mean, I knew Sheffield Wednesday Wills. In fact, I actually went down to, uh, went down to Wills for a few days and, and, um, when Dave Jones was the manager. Um, you know, I, they were in the Premier League at the time. Um, it was a big club. There was a lot of big players there. Um, Kenny was there as well. Um, you know, Alec Ray. And you, you know, you could, boy Sturridge up front. Um, you, you could go right through them. Um, but for me, it was, you know, I'm always one where I think if, if you're going to move, you need to have a, a platform to fall, to fall back on. Um, if, it doesn't, if, it doesn't, if it doesn't happen, you should always have something to come back to. Um, and I felt as if, yeah, I had played a few games, I'd scored a few goals, but you could quite easily be forgotten about if you were down there and it didn't happen. Um, so I, for me, it was, it was for part of my development, I felt as if, let's take command and get a few goals under my belt. Um, and get a few seasons, play games. Um, you know, you, you look at it nowadays. There's a, there's a lot of youngsters play a couple of games and just go, and you never hear about them again until you know they're released and then they come back up the road. Um, so for for me, I, I think looking back, that was a big decision that I wanted to play games. Um, you know, and off the back of that, I think Bill Cardiff had a bid of, of seven hundred fifty thousand um, accepted. I went down. Um, Looked about Dave Jones again. Um, Dave Jones loves you, mate. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> um, but when I was there, I just I don't know. There was something wasn't right for me, and I can. There wasn't a direct call, but I can. knew at the time that Rangers were interested. Um, you know, and, and as soon as I, I heard that, I was prepared to take the chance and, and, and wait and see if something happened. Um, I knew there was a phone call made in, in the, the summer. Um, but I think Rangers had went ahead and, and signed Franny Jeffers on loan. Um, but they had already more or less said, look, it's not going to happen now. We'll get it done in January. Um, so that's where it was. And, and I decided to come back up the road, knowing fine well that if I go and perform, there's an opportunity to go to. Um, for me, which was my, my boyhood club, the team I'd always supported, um, you know, every strip for, for growing up. Um, you know, so when that comes along, you can't turn it down. And, and I just felt as if, Go back up the road, go and play games, continue to, to do what you're doing and score goals. And, you know, for me, when I left, um, you know, I left at the top goal scorer Kamarnock, um, went to Rangers, finished the top goal scorer there. So with the two clubs, um, I was top goal scorer in the one season and it's not been done so, um, since. So can you remember getting the, the call that it was going to be Rangers? Can you yes, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I went and met them, had everything sorted out. Um, you know, I, but I think for, for me that the... <coughs> The big part of the, the, the move for me was, was I wanted to make sure that everything with Kilmarnock was, was smooth. You know, and I've been proven right that I think you never know when you can go back to somewhere. Um, so I think the Middlesbrough, Portland Timbers, Eskish here, they, 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 better, they better be scared because I might <laughs> end up back there. Um, but, you know, I'm always for one, I don't think you should burn bridges when you leave a club. Um, you know, I think that... You just never know what's round the corner, um, you know. And I, and I felt as if Kilmarnock could give gave me the opportunity to, to become a professional footballer. Um, the conversations I had with the club before I was leaving, and that I wanted to make sure that because I knew they were struggling, um, you know, that the club was tight with, with, with money, you know. And I I felt bad in a way that they had seven hundred fifty to a million pound for me in the summer transfer window, and then all of a sudden it was five hundred. Um, you know, for, for a club at Kilmarnock, two hundred thousand plus is, is a lot of money. Um, so I think that when I, when I started having the conversations regarding, because you know, I was entitled to some of that, I felt as if 
if I left some of the, the um, you know, the money for the, for the youngsters to go and spend it in the youth academy and, and, and hopefully produce um, more to come through. Um, you know, it would, it would leave, you wouldn't leave a salutation in a lot of people's mouth, um, even though you were going to, to another club in Scotland. And, and from there, you know, I think I've always had a close relationship with the Kamalit fans before that, but I think that added to it as well. So see when the, you were knocking back these 750 bids, were Kamarnik all right? Or were, were they desperate to get you the door for the money? Or uh, you know, I think, I mean, well? I think, you know, it's been well documented. The club was in like £11 million pounds worth of debt. You know, it was, it was struggling. It was, you know, it was dire straits at the club. Um, you know, there were some months where the wages were struggling to be paid. Um, you know, but I think when you look back, you know, when you've got a dream and you want to do something and everything, I think you just blank out everything because there's, there's, it is on the horizon. Um, you know, and for me, if I hadn't did what I did that, you know, from the summer to Jan uh, sorry, the summer to December, you know, go and score the goals that I did, I think maybe I've been totally different going to Rangers um, in terms of, you know, who is this we're signing, what's he actually done, what's happened. Whereas I think I went with a what I said earlier um, regarding you've always got something to fall back on. I left with the basis of I was coming off a of seventeen. Premier League goals for Kamal that season, um, you know, and, and, and luckily enough, I went on and continued that at, at Rangers and went and scored another twenty odd in the league. So, is it just the standard that's the big difference between Kamal and Rangers? Is it the pressure, the standard, the player? <coughs> what did you find your first year? Because McLeish got sacked for his finishing. Third well, big league. Alex signed me, uh -huh. um, and then, but it was it was already leaving. Um, you oh. know, it was it was already. I think it came out in the the, um, the February March time that he was going to be leaving. He was going to be moving on, um, and Rangers already announced that Paul Aguirre would come in. Um, you know, so for me it was, it was, when I went, as I said there, it was important to hit the ground running. Um, you know, I was fortunate enough that we had a, I missed a couple of league games because it was over the Christmas period um, and it couldn't actually be signed to the, to the first of January, but I actually left around about the Christmas time, um, before Christmas in fact, um, so that the paperwork and everything was done because you know how the SFA like a wee holiday. <laughs> <laughs> but. Um, I think Peter had my first game. I was able to go and grab a hat trick, and you know, to be fair, it was just it was one of the fairy tale seasons. You know, you start off you scoring goals with the club that's given you an opportunity, the club that you've always grew up supporting, then gives you an opportunity to go and perform, and you continuously score goals, um, and then to to obviously top it off at the end of the season with international recognition and, and go and score a couple of goals there. It was it was a fantastic season. I'll never forgive you for that hat trick against Peter Hedman. <laughs> Um, it was the easiest hat trick ever as well. <laughs> um, so McLeish leaves and obviously did you hear rumours that Le Guin was coming in? What, what was your thoughts when you, you heard he was coming in? Well, I mean, I think that, that when you look back on it, um, Paul Le Guin at the time was a big name in European football. Leon, wasn't it? Leon had, had been a success. Leon had you know, dominated French football for the last you know, five, six years. Um, and it was... You know, it was, it was a big signing for Rangers, um, you know, and I think, looking back at it, I think Paul Le Guin underestimated the size of Rangers. Um, and, and I think that was, because, I mean, he wasn't a bad guy. You know, I think a lot of people have got, you know, me, Fergie, and, and the local ones is, is, you know, going against them and doing this. And it wasn't the case. You know, I, I think when you, when you look back at the, the whole scenario, it started off, you know, when you grow up a Rangers fan, when you're playing with a club that you, you you know you love, going to places like Inverness, going to places like Dunfermline and drawing is no an issue. Um, you know, but to to come in and be praised for doing it, I'm sorry. I mean, I just I, you you can't accept it. Um, you know, and, and I think that yes, there's 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 definitely a role in terms of praise people when sometimes when you're getting beat games and everything. But let's be realistic, Rangers or Celtic's never going to be that case um, unless you've maybe. You know, being to Pataudry, which is a difficult ground, being to Tynecastle, which is a different ground, and you've been battered for 90 minutes, you've managed to nick a draw or something, then, yeah, praise. But going to Inverness and go to Dunfermline, no disrespect to those clubs, um, and drawing, it's no good enough for Rangers. Um, you know, and I think there was, there was starting to become problems, um, not just with the Scottish guys, because I think a lot of people forget the fact that you know, Julian Rodriguez was still there. Jose Pierre, fan fan, had just left. Um, you know, Dado Puzzle was still playing. Um, but, you know, Big Dado could probably still be playing there now if it wasn't. You know, it was made to, you know, if you don't train, you're not going to play. Um, you know, it was, it was virtually impossible for Dado Puzzle to train every day. Um, Why you know, was he training so hard? 
Oh, he just his knee was goosed. Oh, yeah. You know, I think so. You know, I think that the way he would do it would, you know, Dada would go and have his cool down Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, train the Thursday, Friday, and be ready for a Saturday. You know, I think you only need to look at the, you know, how good he was in a pitch. He, he managed his body. He knew where it was. Um, you know, and I think that's the kind of that's the wee things that separate good coaches from good managers. Um, so for me, I think that for Walter and people like that, they were able to manage people. You know, I think Paul struggled with managing people, but the training was good. You know, the, the group was good in terms of the training, the standard was good. Um, but, as I said, at the end of the day, you're judged on results and um, the results weren't good enough. So would he never kick a tea, cup of tea over? Would he never shout sh and... No, you know, I mean, I, I can... You know, there, there, was, there was a few incidents. There was a few... I mean, I think that the, the Phil Bardsley is the, the one who... It always comes back to me um, regarding that... You know, at Rangers and Celtic, you, you're always wanting like hard tackling, getting about it, and intensity. you know, I think in, intensity. You're right, yeah. uh, you know, and, and especially in training because you want to replicate what you're doing in training in the game. You know, and Phil Bardsley, you know, you just need to look at the career he's had now. He's went on and done this, and you know, we were out the back pitch, and somebody plays the ball into somebody, he comes right through him and smashes him. That was normal. Do you know what I mean? It was. <laughs> when I first went, Big Marvin was doing it to everybody every day. You know, I can remember even Fergie get elbowed right in the post, and you know, right from the kick off of a game, um, you know, you, you would throw it up and start yeah. the game, and Big Marvin bang in straight away. And but and I can eat. There was a softness about us. There was an acceptance of we'll go out and we'll try and play. We'll get the ball down, and you know, we'll pass it, and we'll, we'll create chances, and we'll score goals. But in reality, that wasn't the Rangers at the time. You know, I, I think that. When Walter came in, he got the Scottish boys back in. He got, um, you know, the ones who you could tell that it meant something. You know, when you look at, you know, a lot of the players that Paul Le brought in were, were good signings. You know, Sasa Papic went on to have a fantastic career um, for Rangers, won numerous trophies, played the UEFA Cup final, um, played Champions League, and, you know, was a fantastic player. You know, Paul Le brought him to the club. Um, so, not everything was bad. Um, you know, but I think there's been a lot of. You see, there's been a lot of made-up stuff, there's been a lot of things said um, regarding the whole Scottish contingent towards Paul Le Guin. I mean, I think deep down, um, you know, he didn't want to be there. He underestimated the size of the club. Um, and, and, and for somebody, for people that lived in Bree uh, Breeze Rangers, it was disappointing. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and I think that's why Fergie was the way he was. Um, but, like, it's, it's, it's passing